we're talking about graphing relationships and really a lot of what we do in Algebra 1 relates to graph. And uh, we've already looked at on Desmos some real life activity that we can graph. Typically, it's some measurement uh, in respect to time. So we want to talk about that in this lesson. But to start out with, we want to look at some vocabulary so we know uh, exactly what the words mean and what we're talking about. The first page of your notes looks like this, and this really should be a review. We just want to name the parts of the coordinate plane. Now, if you want to, on your paper, write down A, B, C, D, and E. Just like that. And we'll talk about with this graph what it is that we're defining here. For example, everything, and E is right here. E's here and here both. Everything there we call the coordinate plane. So E is the coordinate plane. Now, if you recall from middle school, the coordinate plane is made up of two axes or two axes. The first axis we'll talk about is the one that goes up and down or is labeled A in the graph. A is what we call the y-axis. The axis that goes vertical or up and down. Our paper or our, our diagram has labeled the other axis C. That axis moves from left to right, or horizontally. That's the x-axis. In the very center of the coordinate plane, the coordinates we give 0, 0, we've labeled B here. And B is the center. It's where it all begins. It is the origin. We give that the coordinates 0, 0, meaning it... It's right smack dab in the center of both axes. And then D is literally a location in the coordinate plane, a point. And we will label that point with something we call an ordered pair. That's just a quick review of the coordinate plane. Let's look at some additional vocabulary we're going to be needing and using in this unit.
Now, everything that we've been talking about, we'll define as a relation. And a relation is a set of ordered pairs. And throughout the course of your math career, you'll be dealing with what is the domain. Well, the domain is the set of all of the first coordinates of a relation or a function. Can we write that on paper? Or can yes. We it on the yeah, you can write it on paper. You may also type it in to your notes in Google Classroom if you want to. Either way is fine. And again, this video will be up if you need to watch it later to fill in those blanks. If you miss something, I get to go in a little faster than, than what you're able to type or write. So the domain is the first coordinate, relation or function, and an order pair has uh, two coordinates, and so the range is a set of all the second coordinates of a relation or function. Now, a function rule is an algebraic expression that defines a function. We'll be a little more, give you more details about that a little later in this unit. It is important to understand, though, what a function is. And a function is a relation in which every domain value is paired with exactly one of the range values. I can remember when I first started learning about domain and range, to me that was confusing, and then it really made sense. <clears throat> if it is truly a function, then my first coordinate, my first input can only have one output that follows it or one second coordinate. Wouldn't make sense to go to two places at the same time. That's not really logical. So a function is a relation in whichever domain value is paired with exactly one range value. Now when looking at graphs, we're going to be talking about a couple different types of graphs. For example, one type of graph is called a discrete graph. And it's made up of unconnected points. Unconnected points. Now, it's going to be very easy to recognize because... Those unconnected points will look just like dots in the coordinate plane. And that's a discrete graph. Maybe it's helpful to remember that discrete begins with a D. And D looks a lot like the same letter. It is the same letter, begins the word dots. Maybe that helps you. A continuous graph is made up of straight lines. Or curves. It's continuous. The, to me, the word continuous means something that keeps going. 
And so instead of having all these little dots or these little breaking points, continuous means a line or a curve. And if it helps you remember it, maybe you could think about the C being the curve part of that. And then the definition of a linear proportional relationship is a straight line. And what makes it linear, linearly proportional is that it'll pass through the origin. It's a characteristic. But a linear non-proportional relationship is a straight line as well. But what makes it different it's a line that does not pass through the origin. So that will start to get the basic vocabulary we need down for the first lesson and, and the beginning part of Unit 2. Be sure that you've typed this vocabulary into your notes or handwritten it into your notes, either way. But just make sure that that's there. So that's the vocabulary to start out for Unit 2.